Hi you guys, it's Joanne here at Apple Tree Studio and today we're going to be looking at this stuff. Brush out. <laughs> I know some of you absolutely love your brush out, but I also get a lot of messages from people asking me, Joanne, what is a brush out? All I can say is, if you like watercolour, then you'll love this. The rules are similar, but not similar. It's so confusing. I've been using it for, what, 20 years now, and I'm still kind of living and learning with it. Uh, in fact, this picture behind me here uh, of the foxgloves, I painted over 15 years ago with brush -O, and I'm pointing that out because a lot of people will tell you that brush -O is not light fast. That is not true at all. Obviously, it depends where you're storing your picture. Don't put it in bright sunlight or it's just going to disappear. And it would disappear if it was in watercolour or acrylic or whatever. So, yeah, make sure you hang it not in direct sunlight. But yeah, 15 years old and the colours are just as vibrant as they were from the day I painted it. So you don't need to worry about that. Your picture is not going to disappear on you. So I want to show you the techniques that I've picked up over the years. One of them is do not take the lids off your brush out. No, 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 it will go everywhere. It took me a long time to work it out, but now I punch a hole in the top and everyone seems to be doing that now. And it's good because if you take the top off, it's gonna go everywhere. So please don't do that, especially if you're working in your living room with a lovely cream carpet, <laughs> don't do it. So this tutorial, I'm gonna go through a few basics with you. Uh, sprinkling and spraying, a little bit of bleach technique. And I'm gonna move you on just to paint a very kind of loose little bit of lavender with your brush -o. So I'm gonna stop waffling on now. Uh, go and grab your equipment. I will go through the material list with you on the video and let's paint some of this gorgeous, gorgeous brush -o together. I'll see you in the studio, bye. Okay, welcome to this introduction of brush -o. Uh, okay, so when you first get your brush out, you're gonna, it's going to come in a little box like this one. And you're going to open it up and you're going to see that the pots have these lids on. And I spent years taking those lids off and making an absolute mess, <laughs> as you can imagine, because it is a powder in there. So eventually I worked out that if I popped a little hole in the top, it was so much easier to control. Uh, and that, and to this day, I still use that method. But we'll talk about that a little bit later on. So what is brush -o, okay? Well, basically brush -o is a powder pigment and it's very much like watercolour in that you can produce lovely, vibrant washes. But also it's kind of, because it's a powder, when you spray it, you get this lovely textured quality and that's what draws me to it more than anything because I spent years trying to kind of think of different ways to make my watercolours more expressive and more interesting and more textured. And I can actually achieve this very easily with the brush out and so can you. So, okay, we'll put that down. Now, let's just take, this is, this is one of my pots, okay? And you can see I've used it quite a lot. It's got a little hole in the top. A lot of people have started now to put little pins in the top. Uh, I don't really see the point in that, because, to be honest, because if this is kept in a dry environment, then it is, it is not gonna go damp. I mean, I travel all over the world with my brush -out, Spain, France, Italy, and I just pop a little bit of tape over the top of that hole to save it going everywhere, all over my suitcase and my belongings, uh, and then just peel that off, and it's, it's good to go. So let's have a look at what we can do with brush -out. So before we start, let's have a look at what uh, equipment I need or you will need. I've always got a bit of kitchen roll handy or an old tea towel, jug of water, spray bottle that's really important and make sure that it's a fine mist of a spray and not a shoot uh, a lot of students come to workshops and spray the work and a shoot of water comes out and that's not what you want you want this fine mist of spray and you can get those from most garden centers or diy shops okay i've got an old brush now i will go back into this uh, as we go on but uh I use my regular decent brushes, like say for instance, this Kalinsky Sable here with my brush out because it's just fine. But when you start to use something like this, okay? So this is my bleach supplement, okay? And I've put it into a little uh, container here so I can spray it as well. And I've got, and I've written on here, it's 30% bleach to 70% water. 
this is when I will use an older brush because obviously bleach and your decent brushes won't go well together. So that's worth remembering. But we'll come back to the bleach thing. Uh, I'm using a piece of Bockingford. Now that's important because I've spent years looking for different paper or experimenting with different papers. And I found that the Bockingford is probably one of the best. I mean, it does work with other papers, don't get me wrong. But I just like the way the Bockingford reacts. And, and because I use it all the time, I'm familiar with it. So it's worth finding a paper that, you, you know, you're comfortable with and you know exactly what's going to happen uh, when you put the brush on. Uh, is it going to lift as easily on this paper? Is it going to stain more? These are questions you need to ask yourself. But my advice is the Bockingford. I, I'm not sure. I know we can get that in the UK. I'm not sure about anywhere else, but you can get it on Amazon. So, uh, And I also recommend you buy anything over a £200 weight of paper. And that's the sort of advice I'll be giving you when you're painting with your watercolours as well. Okay, so there's the Bockingford. So let's have a look what this can do. Okay, so let's do a little sprinkle. Now, I often say to students when they come to workshops, less is best. And that is the best piece of advice I can give you. Less is best. You can hardly see that. I'll hold that up to the camera, but I'm sure you can just see a slight kind of bit of a sprinkle of the powder there on the paper. Let's have a look what happens when we spray that with water. Oh my goodness, it still excites me to this day. It becomes alive. And, and look at the colours you can get. This colour I'm using, by the way, is the ultramarine blue. Uh, and you can see that it's got ultramarine blue in there. But can you also see it's got little speckles of the red in there as well and purples? And that's because Brusho is made up of lots of different pigments. Uh, so sometimes when you spray into a certain colour, you'll get little surprises as well where other colour will start to appear. And, and I used to fight that. I used to think, oh, no, I didn't want purple in my picture. But now I really do embrace it. And it's, it's, it gives your picture an individuality, which is something that we all strive for. OK, so we've got that down. Let's just take the brush and let's illustrate how easily we can smooth that down. So it becomes like a watercolour wash then, doesn't it? Very much so. You'll see little speckles here and there, look. I can just keep smoothing that down until I get a really nice fine wash. So like I said before, it's very much like watercolour in that respect. And you can still work into this area, you know. We can still put a few little sprinkles into that. Let's give that a little bit of a spritz. So we can work on a wet wash, a flat wash of colour, and we can put more colour on top of that. You can put any colour you like. Let's take this one. This is a large tube. You can see this is a well-loved tube of mine. Uh, this is the Rose Red Brush O. And I do prefer the bigger ones because I do use a lot of Brush O, but these little tiny ones, I've still got some of those that I've had for like nine years and there's still Brush O in there. So it really is a good value product as well. Okay, let's just take a bit of the wrap, that red. And let's just sprinkle that in there, look. Oof. Let's give it a little spritz. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> it really does still excite me. I'm like a child at Christmas. I love it. Okay, one of the things I do a lot is if I've put a wash down, I will get a bit of kitchen paper or a, a tea towel. And I'll just, if it's too dark, you know, and I want to lift a bit of that paint away, I'll just put a bit of kitchen roll on there. I'll just lift that away. Oh, and look, we've got a surprise there as well. We've got another masterpiece. <laughs> okay, we'll leave that to one side. So, yeah, so that's two colours together. Now, let's have a look at something I forgot to mention uh, when I went through the materials, and that is wax resist, okay? So... Here we are. This is a bit of old candle wax. I've got paint on me already, look. A bit of old candle wax and an old white crayon here. Uh, and I would prefer that. You can buy those little sticks of, of wax resist from the art supply shop, but I don't mind. This is free, so, you know, I'm quite happy to use bits of old candle wax. And I use it as a resist. So I know that you can use masking fluid. I've never really loved masking fluid because I just find I've wrecked so many brushes. It rips the paper. I'm just not a fan of it, really. 
the wax resist does the same job, but it doesn't come off. So once it's done on the paper, it, there's no way that's going, going to come off the paper at all. So it takes time to master this technique because you've got to really imagine how it's going to look because when you put the, the wax resist down, obviously you can't see it. We can become a little bit heavy handed with that as well. And that's something that you want to avoid. But for now, let's just have a look at what this can do for us. So let's just, what can we do? <laughs> okay, now you can't see what I've done there. I know what I did there, but you can't see. So let's take another colour. Let's take Ost blue maybe, or oh, well, the crimson's quite nice. And let's sprinkle a little bit of the crimson. Do you know what? I haven't put a hole in that one. <laughs> we'll continue with that one. That's a new pot that I haven't put a hole in yet. Silly girl. Okay. And we'll sprinkle a little bit of that on top there. And again, that's quite a lot of paint. And hopefully, you should be able to see what I've written. I'm just going to give that a little bit of a lift. I might put another colour over that actually, just to make it more pronounced. That's the ultramarine blue again. So it's the same colours at the top we've got at the bottom. Give it a little spray. And I'm sure you can see that now that I've written my own name <laughs> in the brush over. Lift a little bit off. There we go. I mean, that is quite heavy handed. Uh, you can you can chisel your wax into a point so you can get a really fine point but this method here that i'm showing you with the wax resist is something that i use an awful lot especially for floral work and we're going to move on to that uh, so it's worth mastering this this wax resist technique it isn't difficult it's just that you have to be very mindful about how much you use okay so i'm going to let these dry and then we're going to talk a little bit about using the bleach technique Okay, so let's have a little talk about the bleach technique. Okay, so I've got a scrap of paper here, but let's come back to that. And let's go back to this one, which is relatively dry now. And this is where you need to think about the paper you're using, because I'm using the Bockingford and I found that the 75 cent water to bleach works quite well. Certain colours will lift really easily and certain colours won't. And it's worth experimenting to see which colours lift easily and which don't. Uh, and that's quite easy. You just put some little marks down of the colours and then just run a little bit of bleach through that and then just leave it a while and just to see what happens. Uh, I do get asked a lot of questions about the light fastness of brusho as well while we're on this subject of bleach and brusho. And I've got paintings hanging in my house that are over 10 years old. That I've got bleach in them and I've used brusho and the colours are fine. The only advice I would give you is don't hang a picture in direct sunlight, that being acrylic or watercolour or brusho, but they're just as light fast as any other medium that I work with. Uh, okay, and you can go on the website as well and have a look at the uh, comments on that. Right, okay, so let's have a go. So a bit of bleach in here. Now I use this technique and I use a, a different, I use two techniques, let's, let's get this straight. I use two techniques. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll spray a little bit of the bleach onto my paper. I'll just wet my brush a little bit there. And I'll lift the bleach with the brush and then I'll start to draw with that bleach. Now at first you think nothing's gonna happen and don't forget, I'm not using neat bleach here. I'm using a watered down consistency. But eventually you'll see that it just starts to happen. So can you see the circles that I've drawn into that? It's almost a rose shape, isn't it? Now that is diluted bleach. If the bleach was stronger, it would lift clean away. I, I kind of like seeing a bit of color underneath that. So that's one method. See, it's becoming much more apparent now, isn't it? It just takes a little, little bit of time and you've got to be patient. Don't try and go into it uh, more and more because you think nothing's happening because it will happen. Again, depends what paper you're using. Some papers lift easily and some don't. Okay, so we've got that lovely swirly shape. So let's have a look what happens if we spray the bleach on here. And um, I'll just give it a quick spritz. Now that seemed an awful lot there. <laughs> And again, it's taking its time, but can you see now it's bleaching that color away? 
So it's leaving little fragments of colour, but it's almost back to white paper in some places. And here we're getting this textured effect. And there's so many possibilities for this. I mean, I've painted snow scenes, winter scenes, summer scenes, autumn scenes, leaves, trees, people, faces, you name it. I've used this technique an awful lot. So it's worth experimenting and it's worth playing around with the bleach and to see what it can do for you. So let's just move on slightly and let's go back to what I said about brusho uh, being made up of lots of different pigments. So I think a great example of that is the black brusho. And I'm just using an old piece of watercolor paper. You can see it's got a picture on the back there. Just an old scrap. Okay, and let's put some of that black in. I'll put quite a bit on there. And we'll get our clean water and we'll give that a spritz. The more I spritz it, the more you'll see different colours. And that's got an awful lot of water on there, so I'm just going to lift a slight bit of that water away. Can you see here now? the different colours in that. I can see purples, blues, blacks, little specks of orange even. So the black is a really exciting colour and it's, it's something that I would never use a black when I'm painting with watercolours, but black is my favourite colour or one of my favourite colours when it comes to using brush out. And if you don't want that textured appearance, then you can do this. You can take your brush and you can smooth that wash down So it becomes a nice flat wash of colour. It's got like a bluey haze to it and I can still see a few little purples and other specks of colour in that. But basically what we're trying to do here is just come down and give it this nice flat wash approach. And there we go. Now, let's have a little experiment because with this one, and you can see the bleach is really taking away a lot of the paint there. This was a dry surface and we spritz the bleach onto a dry surface. Let's see what happens when we spritz a little bit of bleach onto a wet surface. I'll take my bleach solution and I'm going to give it a quick spritz. And nothing seems to be happening to start with. Then all of a sudden <laughs> you start to see it appearing. And I've recently done some snow scenes using this technique. In fact, I used it on my, my Brush Your Secrets uh, DVD as well, if you've got that. And you'll know that I used it for smoke coming out of the chimney or creating a snow effect. Now, it's not lifted too well, so I'm going to give it another little spritz because I've given it a bit of time. And I know it's not going to go much lighter than that. So I'm going to give it another couple of little spritzes there. It's like being a child <laughs> because it's just a medium that you can play around with so much and don't put pressure on yourself to create masterpieces to start with. This is what you should be doing, playing around with these washes. Look at that now. And that's just a diluted mixture. Imagine if we had uh, a solution that was, say, 70% 70, 70 bleach to water. This is 70% water to bleach. So you can imagine that it would be a lot lighter, wouldn't it? So there you go. So there's some little warm-ups for you. Before we go, uh, I'll just put that to one side. I'm in the middle of this painting, so it's not quite finished, but it's it's a hellebore, as you can see, nice big round flower. And I spritzed the washes and made this lovely circle shape. And then I started to apply a neater bleach. Now I spritzed it so you can see there's little white bits. You see that little white bits where I've spritzed. But then what I've done is I've sprayed a bit of the bleach onto the paper and used an old brush and started to lift away the colour to create these sparkly white flowers. And the nice thing about that is once this is dry, you can actually paint over those bleach areas or you can move the paint around to lose some edges and make them a little bit more defined. So it's a lovely way of creating that bit of sparkle into your picture. Here's another one that I'm halfway through. 
whoops, just fell on the floor. Here I'm looking at creating a hydrangea. And again, I've used the same technique. So I have put the collar down, I used a, a, a turquoise and a purple and spritzed that till it was kind of textured like this. I let that dry. Then I got a little bit of diluted bleach, spritzed it onto the paper and started to lift out these subtle little flower shapes. And obviously this isn't finished yet, but you can see how it works really, really well, doesn't it? You've got these lovely kind of not too light areas. I don't want them to be white. So they're very subtle shades of blue against the darker blue. So you can see that it's perfect for florals, but it's also perfect for lots of other subjects. And that's what we're going to move on to next. We're going to, we're going to move on and produce a little brush -o study. So I've got my piece of Bockingford paper here and let's just do a little study that doesn't involve bleach. It doesn't involve wax. It just involves a brush -o and your spray bottle and a nice clean tub of water. Uh, I thought we'd have kind of a play with some lavender, maybe uh, have a look at how we could produce something that, you know, looks like a, a lovely growth of lavender. So the colours I've chosen are the lemon yellow. I've got the big tub of that and I've got the smaller tub of the violet or you could use the purple or you could even use a red and a blue together. Uh, and that's something actually that I haven't mentioned yet, uh, that I very rarely mix colours on the palette. Uh, more often than not, I let the colours mix on the paper. I use watercolour a lot, so I do mix colours together on a palette when I'm using watercolour. But when I'm using the brush -o, very, very rarely do I mix the colour. I let it blend on the paper. So, OK, let's just take... I've got a little scrap of paper here that I can use uh, if I want to put any paint down onto that. But first of all, let's do a little bit of sprinkling first. So I'm going to take some of that lemon yellow and I'm just going to drop in a few little bits like that. And I'll give that a spritz with my water. And I'd like to kind of lift out some stem shapes. So we've got the yellow on. So let's kind of lift out maybe one here, maybe a little one there, maybe one here. Okay, so we've got our nice stem shapes and I might give that another little spritz actually. Now this is still wet, but let's be brave and let's take our purple and let's just put, sorry, it's the, it's the violet, isn't it? I'm using not the purple. A little bit of brush out into those areas. I might sprinkle a little bit down here as well. And we'll give that a spritz. Oh, that's another one. I mean, you're never, it's never going to get a botanical study <laughs> doing this. It's always going to be a little bit loose and a little bit wild, but I kind of like that. Now, there's an awful lot going on on this paper now. You can see the purples running down and let's kind of encourage that a little bit. Let's let that run down a bit more. Just going to get some tissue paper and lift that away. Let's lift that up. We've ended up with purple stems, haven't we? That's okay. And if there's bits you don't like, I mean, it's a little bit heavy here, so I'm going to lift a little bit away here. Just softening that back a little bit. And at this point, if you want to, you could put some paint down onto your scrap of paper here. And maybe produce some more stem shapes. Completely up to you, your picture. I'm going to drop some into that as well. I'm going to give that another little sprinkle here, maybe here, maybe here. It just kind of does the work for you, doesn't it? And now we're kind of creating this lovely feel of lavender. Uh, and, and the texture qualities is really doing it for us, isn't it? You can still move your brush around. If you don't like what you've done, you can always get a bit of bleach and lift it out. But we're just playing for now. We're just playing about. You can push your brush into that and move it up a little bit more. 
make it more pronounced. It's just clean water and I'm just dabbing away at those little shapes. Moving that paint about a little bit. It's a bit heavy that one, isn't it? There we go. And really that's it, you know. I did say you don't want to be producing masterpieces at this point. This is where you're playing and you're seeing what the brusher will do for you. Uh, there's nothing to stop you taking this a little bit further in that you might want to add some leaves or you might want to uh, bleach an area out. But, but for now, it's a lovely way of showing you how we can create a very simple shape that resembles a flower just by sprinkling and spraying. So I've got another piece of Bockingford here and what I want to show you is how, remember the hydrangea that I showed you earlier? Let's have a look at how we can lift colour away from colour we've got down on the paper. So let's let's choose, let's do two colours this time uh, and that, that, that can show you how we can mix colour on the paper as well. So let's take a little bit of that turquoise. That's quite a lot. <laughs> and a smidge of that violet. There we go. And I'm going to give this a spritz. Always the exciting part, this. Giving it a spritz. Love doing this. Absolutely love doing this. I never get tired of it. Look at that. Oh. And you can see where I was a bit heavy with the old turquoise at the top here. So I'm just going to grab myself a piece of kitchen roll. I'll just lift a small smidge of that away. Lots of water on that because we really want this to dry before we can work onto it. But I want to cover the whole paper uh, with that texture. So I'll keep spritzing. And again, let's lift some little smidges away. Might put a little bit more of that purple into that. There we go. Oh. <laughs> it is like being a child, isn't it? It really is. Okay, so that's perfect. So we've got the whole paper now covered with the brush out. I'll just lift up to camera so you can see that. And now we have to let this dry. We have to be patient and let it dry. And it's very tempting to put the hairdryer on that as well. And I know from <laughs> past experience that there's an awful lot of water on there. You can see all the little blobs here. If I put the dryer onto that, it's gonna blow it everywhere and it's gonna spoil that gorgeous texture. So we have to be patient and just to let that dry naturally. Okay, so my paper is nice and dry now. And what I want us to do is to have a play around with the bleach on this one. So let's get my little bleach bottle here. Now, you could squirt it into a palette, couldn't you? I just used the corner of my paper, but you could put it into a palette. It's completely up to you. But we're going to just spray a little bit of that into the corner. And I'm going to use my brush to lift it up. And we're going to create, remember the hydrangeas I showed you earlier? Let's have a look at creating a shape that resembles the little flowers that you tend to have. So there's one, two, three, four. Might need a little bit more of that bleach. Can you see them? They're just starting to happen in one, two, three. I'm just making little circular movements with my brush. So we've got three there. I think three is probably enough. I've kind of made them overlap a little bit as well. There we go. Can you see them now? Can you see? So it's not taking me back to white paper. I don't really want the white paper. I'd like that subtle. It almost goes back to a turquoise colour, doesn't it? So we need to let this dry again, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay. So we'll come back when it's nice and dry. So we're nice and dry now and we want to start to create some flower shapes. So Sometimes I'll put a pencil mark on there and sometimes I won't, but for the benefit of this video, let's let's put a pencil mark on there. So that's the centre of our flower and the petals will kind of come from that. We'll make that overlap that one. 
it just gives us a better shape to work towards if you've got a line if you if you're unconfident about working without a line then there's no problem doing this at all there we go one two and then we'll have another one here it has bleached quite a lot actually that doesn't it there we go so we've got these three shapes so we could take a little bit of the yellow i used previously and just dot of that into the center to remind us where our flowers are you see that now we're going to use our brush out in a more controlled way so we've kind of gone a bit crazy we've sprayed we've bleached now comes the time for a bit of housework a bit of tidying up so let's take the purple oh sorry i keep calling it purple don't it? it's violet and let's put a little bit of that onto my paper here or on a palette, whichever you prefer. And let's start to paint round and tidy up a little bit. So let's paint around this shape here. And clean the brush and just soften those marks away with the heel of that brush. Just pushing those shapes out into that other wash. Sometimes you don't actually have to put up a little blob there, didn't I? Sometimes you don't actually have to go into the paint because, look, you can move paint around as well quite subtly. It's dry, but you're able to move it around. And I'm going to give that just a subtle little shadow onto that flower shape. Soften that away. Let's make this one overlap. So I'm going to take the colour. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm taking the colour from here. And I can do the same here. I can take the colour. It's lovely how you can just take colour from a dry area and just reactivate it. So that's what we're doing here. But let's go back in with that stronger purple again. Or the violet even. Okay. And I'll just, just tidy that away, just soften that wash away. Maybe a few little shadows in there might be quite nice. Why not go into the turquoise? We used the turquoise, didn't we? So we could use that as well. That's quite a strong colour look. I'm just painting around these shapes. Softening those marks away. In and out. Maybe a little bit of a shadow into this one as well, just to knock it back a little bit. I can pick paint up from here and I can move it around here. Now, the thing is, I do love this texture, but when you're using this method, you lose a bit of that texture as well, don't you? Because you're creating, you've gone from this lovely texture to a flat wash. So there's nothing stopping you at this point, getting your spray bottle and just giving that another cheeky little spritz. Now, I can't do too much more at the moment because it's very, very wet. She says, fiddling about with that wash. So the best thing to do now is to let this dry and then we'll just come in and tighten it up a little bit more. So the bleach is nice and dry now and we're just going to put a few little tiny details into that. So, oh, you can use whatever colour you like really. Let's go, let's go back in with that turquoise colour. I do like that one. I think that and the black have got to be my favourite colours. I'm just lifting that off the paper. And we're going to do a little bit of tidying up now. So over here, I need to define the shape of that petal. And it will come round here. Clean the brush. I'm just pushing that pigment back. And here we'll push it back. There's quite a lot of water on there, so I'm just going to lift a tad. Head away in that corner. And we're just drawing around that shape. I 
won't do it all because I kind of like some of those lost and found edges that we've got going on. Just a few little tidy ups, so in that corner perhaps, and then we come down and create that petal. Softening away, maybe just put a smidge of a shadow here where it overlaps that one. If you want to, you can go for further little details like some little dark bits under the centre of the yellow. But for now, really, <laughs> I think this little demonstration is finished. And the problem with brush is, and it's the same with watercolour, isn't it? You never know when to stop. <laughs> so I'm going to put my brush down. But yes, there you go. I'm just going to lift that up a little bit as well so you can see all the texture quality going on there. You can see how we've bleached the flower shapes out and then we tied it around them to create those three little flowers. Isn't that amazing? Don't you wish you could do that with watercolour? <laughs> so there we go. I hope you've enjoyed that. Have a practice. It's not that difficult. Just make sure that you've got everything you need to hand. Uh, and yes, enjoy. I'll see you next time.